Drew is the first person that made me feel okay being me. And the idea of having to live without that is the most painful thing I've ever had to experience. Sorry. What can you tell me about Drew? Drew, well. <laughs> Drew was so magnetic. He was so full of energy. He was witty, confident. He always just wanted to get everyone together. He used to use uh, some move like with a finger dancing. <laughs> he had these long gangly arms and uh, he would, when he was about to make a point, drape one over your shoulder and like pull you in for the lesson learned moment. Only us. I think what I found most fascinating and most inspiring about him was his unbridled authenticity. I truly believe he was the first person who told me that it's okay to love yourself. No matter who you are, no matter how you identify, it's okay to be proud of who you are, to, to acknowledge that you are beautiful inside and out. He was just so excited to be alive. Five years ago, on a Saturday night, a gunman entered this gay club, injuring 53 people and killing 49. For Brute, I went to Pulse in Orlando to tell you the story and legacy of Christopher Andrew Leinanen, also known as Drew, who lost his life that night. Let's see if there's anything cute on that. Oh, that's swimming. He was always wanting to go, go, go. It's like when he was a baby and would just lay and couldn't turn over, it would frustrate him so much that he wanted to turn over. And once he could turn over, he couldn't wait to crawl. And then once he could crawl, he couldn't wait to walk. And once he could walk, he couldn't wait to ride a bike. And once he started riding a bike, he couldn't wait to drive a car. You cannot even imagine what your heart turns into once you have a child. You know, you thought you could love because you could. You loved lots of things. You might have loved your job. You might have loved your house, loved your pets. But when you have a child, the love is is so different. It's so intense. Here we go. This is actually one of my favorite photos. So it was my birthday. You can tell I'm much younger based on my face. In 2014, I met the person who changed my life and that was my best friend, Drew. More club. Were you guys party animals? <laughs> Drew liked to go out. <laughs> Drew's was sort of the hangout spot. You ready? I'm in it to win it, baby. Yeah. So it was great that I lived a couple doors away. We would gather around his island and, you know, make cocktails and spend time with each other. Without Drew, I probably would have been comfortable spending my entire life hanging out at home, watching TV by myself. Um, but he just drew every ounce of, of extroversion out of me. I wanted desperately to spend as much time as I could around him because I wanted to understand how he could move through the world so effortlessly. I wanted to pick up on those little things. Um, this is one week before the shooting at Pulse.
This is Chris and Juan. When he met Juan, he said, Mom, I think I met that man I'm gonna marry. How comforting that was for me to see my son with the visions of marriage dancing in his eyes. At 2 or 2 in the morning on June 12, a man who pledged allegiance to the Islamic State entered the nightclub and started shooting. Drew was shot nine times. His boyfriend Juan died on his way to the hospital. The shooter was eventually killed by the police after a three hour standoff. Brandon Wolf is one of the survivors. I stepped into a bathroom just before two o'clock and everything about the next few minutes is very vivid for me. I remember the posters above the urinal. I remember stepping over to the sink, how cold the water was from the faucet. I remember there was this cup sitting on the edge, uh, half full of someone's drink, looking like it might fall off. I remember the first sound of gunshots. The confusion, not knowing what it was, assuming that it was part of the music. I remember a pause, this sort of eerie silence. And it wasn't silent because the music was still raging, everything was still the same, but there was this almost bone-chilling calm. And then gunshots, a second round breaking out, this time not stopping. I remember the feeling of panic setting in when I realized what was happening. I remember about a dozen people coming in the bathroom, the looks on their faces like they had seen something truly hellish. I remember the stench of blood and smoke that made its way into the bathroom. I remember a sliver of light in the back of the club from a door that I had never seen used before and willing myself to just put one foot in front of the other and make it to that door. I remember telling myself not to look left into the dance floor because whatever was happening in there was something that I would never forget. I distinctly remember, midway through the room, filled with the fog machine smoke, I remember asking myself why I didn't get an opportunity to say goodbye to my parents, because I was convinced that I was gonna die in there. And then I remember the door flying open, the night air, the parking lot, the screams of people around me jumping over bushes, running for their lives. I remember blood. And I also remember relief because I wasn't supposed to be alive. And there I was standing in a parking lot, disoriented, but alive. Right then and there, I realized that Drew and Juan, in the most ordinary of fashion, were dancing underneath a disco ball, standing in the center of the dance floor, in the middle of that man's line of fire. I think, although it took us some time to learn what happened, I think that's when I knew. I think that's when I knew that I was never gonna get to see them again. Drew died on the floor of the club. And I just didn't, I didn't know, and I still don't really know how you go on without them. Drew's the first person that made me feel okay being me. And the idea of having to 
live without that is the most painful thing I've ever had to experience. Sorry. So that's the story of what happened at Pulse. About a couple months after the, um, the murders, they gave us the opportunity to get our kids' things back. The FBI, they cleaned it as much as they could. I'm not sure if that's like some blood stain on that. These were two bullet holes where his knees got blown out and then he got shot here and here. See, it smells like whatever chemicals they, they uh, used to clean them. The Pulse Massacre remains the deadliest terrorist attack in the U.S. since 9-11. And to date, it is the deadliest incident in the history of violence against the LGBT community. We had a funeral service for Drew a few days after the shooting. His mother asked me to be a pallbearer, which was an incredible honor, and I'm really grateful for that. As we made our way down the aisle of this packed to the Brim Church, I remember holding on to the side of it really, really tightly, like I thought my fingers might fall off. And it's only later that I realized that that's because I quite literally didn't want to let go of Drew until I had found the right words to say goodbye to him. And I looked down at that wooden box and I made a promise. I said, I will never stop fighting for a world that you would be proud of. You know, if people are looking for some buttoned up, cleaned up story of what happened, it doesn't exist. Uh, the pain will never go away. This community will never heal uh, in the way that is, you know, ni nice and tidy for other people. But there are things that keep us going. There are things that pull us together as a community that, that keep us finding purpose in the work that we do. Drew had a remarkable talent for bridging people across divides that would normally keep them apart. And my hope is that as we get further and further removed from the tragedy at Pulse, that we can continue to tap into the networks that he built, that we can continue to tap into the talents that he had. I planted this one tree from a single leaf in honor of Christopher, and now it's like 50 feet high already in the front. I put it in the front so I could watch it a little more. I told Jose just to uh, make sure I get cremated that um, you mix Christopher's ashes and my ashes and plant a tree somewhere, put us in the ground, and hopefully will help a tree grow. If someone thinks about Christopher, they don't have to get to know what his name is because it's too long anyway, right? Who's gonna memorize Christopher Andrew Linen? And it's a lot of vowels. But if you get to know his spirit, if you get to know his love and his kindness and his gregariousness and his, like, love for life and if for just a few minutes when you feel his spirit that you yourself whoever you are for just five minutes that you're just a nicer kinder person that's the best way that you're going to honor my son when it gets really hard when the going gets tough when the days seem dark i just remember his arm over my shoulder telling me to say i love you more often.